Brian Twining, it's the final race of the NASCAR regular season. Qualifying is in the books. We are getting set for night racing at Daytona Saturday night. Get your popcorn ready for the carnage. We saw it tonight in Xfinity. You um, sure did. We'll talk some DFS. We'll build some DraftKings lineups. We'll give you our favorite bets as the odds boards have moved for a little bit. But for the most part, it's pretty sedentary. And I think that's uh, definitely what we talked about prior to uh, pr- uh, qualifying. Yeah. With that being said, let's do what we always do. Hit the intro. Ross Chastain used the wall all the way around this racetrack. Logano has been the class of the field. Check out the big brain on red. Yeah, I need to change my underwear. Brian Twining, qualifying is in the books. You sent me a nice little text message on Wednesday. Um, about maybe a a play that maybe a certain driver was kind of uh, leaning towards, uh, possibly mentioning. (laughs) Um, And now I find myself way overexposed to said driver who just happens to be sitting on the pole. Brian Twining, is it Chase Briscoe week? Is he going to resolve us of all of our missteps from the whole entire season and make everything okay? Uh, I'm probably going to bet that that's a no. Sitting on the pole at Daytona is probably the omen that you don't want. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, for especially for the fall race, like it. if you watch the Xfinity race tonight, you saw absolute chaos and I expect more of the same here. And when you look back at Daytona in the cup series, the last time the pole sitter won here was Dale Earnhardt jr. In July of 2015. So you're saying we're due. (laughs) I guess you could say that, but yeah, I just don't know if they're going to be able to stay up front. And did you know, this is the first time we haven't had a Hendrick front row since August of 2020. We have been Hendrick, Hendrick, Hendrick. So 21, the the 500, Bowman and Byron. After that, Larson and Byron. After that, Larson and Bowman. After that, Larson and Elliott. Bowman and Larson. And that and that was the February race this year. That's crazy. It's, it's been, been a Hendrick dominated race, and yet here we are with qual with qualifying in the books. Kyle Larson is seventh. Uh, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Chase way Elliott down there, buddy. Third. William Byron is twenty seventh, and Alex Bowman is thirty first. So we'll have some decisions to make when we flip over and talk a little. Kings of the draft. Um, should we just jump into it? We can get some thoughts out as we run through the player pool. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. We'll thoughts. we'll definitely right. talk about like because let's do it. Uh interesting little tidbits. We got week zero football tomorrow. We got the Daytona 500. I got a or, well, not Daytona 500, but we're at Daytona. Uh, and I have my fantasy draft, and I'm very excited, and I'm hoping. You guys absolutely crush it this weekend. So let's talk through this. Let's see where the value lies and let's see if we can find some awesome plays and build the lineups for everybody. So we'll start in the we'll, I'll, I'll, we have two 10K drivers. We have Chase Elliott, 23rd, uh, and Denny Hamlin starting 19th at 10 2. Um, I was going to work in the 9K, but there's a lot of them. <laughs> Are you are you rostering Chase Elliott and or Denny Hamlin this week? I don't think I could roster Chase Elliott knowing how much is on the line for him. I I think he's probably going to wind up being one of the guys that's collected in one of the big ones. So for me, he's in a void and kind of expecting him to be probably the most rostered guy of the week. And then yeah. Denny, like starting a little bit further back than we normally expect from him, but We've seen him do it before at super speedways. This is a guy that likes to drop to the back of the field and, you know, kind of conserve early. And then he makes his push late. So I, 
I would not mind going to Denny here, just knowing how good of a super speedway racer he is. Yep. Once again, for super speedways, load up on the guys in the back. You don't have to worry about Dominator. You just want you want to survive the big ones with your rosters, and you want to move forward. And, and you could start last and still win this race. And we'll look at the odds here in a little bit. But a lot of the guys starting near the back are still very, very uh, short prices to win this whole race. So yep. don't 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 uh, build scared. Build uh, build with confidence. I would say I'm I'm happy to build some Hendrick stuff. Just be willing to um, build in some uniqueness if you're doing tournaments. Uh, I think for cash, Chase Elliott is an absolute smash. Um, but you know we've both been on the fade Chase Elliott train, and he's been kind of underwhelming. Um, and he didn't really do anything that makes us very excited. But I don't know. He's he's just I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I'm not going to say that, like, I don't think Elliot can win. I just think that the risk factor is much higher than what we've seen out of him in years past, where he's been really good here, but he's never been in this situation on the cutoff line needing a victory. No, you know, that added aggressiveness is definitely going to play a factor. Yep. Uh, The 9Ks, we have Ryan Blaney starting eighth, Joey Logano starting 14th, Kyle Bush 18th, William Byron 27th. Brad K 12th, uh, Kyle Larson 7th, and Chris Busher the Pusher starting 11th. Uh, the 9K range is juicy. We've got the RFK boys. We got some Penske. We got some Hendrick. We got a little RCR action with the KFB. Uh, who's jumping out to you as the your favorite options from this range? Look, I'm not going to make this mistake again by uh, not going to him. The 24, William Byron. He's starting far enough back. I think he's got a decent shot to move to the front. Plenty of speed here at Daytona. Um, and I I suspect that Hendrick, at, as you mentioned, they had been on the front row. It's so many races consecutively here, but have found it a little more difficult to win these races. I think they may have come here more with race day setups to give them a little bit better handling. While the Fords, yes, they looked incredible during qualifying. They may get a little squirrely when we're getting close, tight knit type racing and stuff. So I, you know, I think the Hendrick guys may may be in play tomorrow for a victory. Um, Again, I'm not going to go to Elliott personally, but I would much rather hit Byron, save all that salary because he's going to go a little overlooked with everybody focusing on the Elliott. I think there's going to be a lot of people on Byron. I think he's going to be very, very popular. But, you know, figuring out a way to use him with other drivers, I think is going to be the key. Um, I'm in on the RFK boys. Obviously, we've seen how dominant they can be. They get to the front. They can stay there. Um, I think Keselowski starting 12th and Butcher starting 11th might give us a little bit of a edge as they're not way in the back. But, you know, there is a little risk with them just because they're starting so far forward. Um, It's always fun just to load up on the back of the pack and see what you can cobble together. But I do think they're interesting separately. And I think they could give you a little bit of uni- uniqueness. Um, I also think Kyle Busch starting 18th, um, given his history in the 18, is kind of fun. And I think he could be a little interesting this week and um, has a tremendous ceiling. And then I think Blaney and Logano, they obviously do very, very well here. They... There's no reason to think they're going to be bad this week. So a lot to like in that range. Uh, 8K, Bubba starting the top five. Party Marty starting 13th. Old Richard Stenhouse starting 32nd, 8,500. Um, I think <laughs> I feel like he's, as, as the defending champ, starting as far back as he is, he has to be super duper popular. Um, And then we have Suarez, Chastain, Chris Bell, and Tyler Reddick rounding out the 8K. I'll ask you again, who's jumping out from this range? Uh, It starts at Stenhouse and it ends at the Trackhouse Boys. Um, Look, look, going back to the 500, seven of the eight top scores in DK scoring all started outside the top 23. So, I mean, like, you need to find guys further in the pack. And if I'm going to continue down this road of talking about, 
expecting chaos here in the fall Daytona race where let me just spout this out again. In each of the three cutoff Daytona races for the regular season, there's been three or more cautions in stage three and we've had overtime finishes in two of the three. So you can expect guys running up front, running in the middle of the pack to get caught up in wrecks as the aggressiveness picks up here. And so I expect guys that maybe aren't the best super speedway racers, and they're probably going to be riding, you know, a little bit further down the pack, or they're just not expected to do good. Lay, lay back a little bit to try to avoid that, to wind up with a good finish, which I think, you know, Stenhouse is really good. So maybe he'll be up front away from yep. that and then suarez and chastain are just kind of okay yep and i think you pick your poison you find your find your jump in point but yeah i think they all prevent tremendous value and i think i think to your point like we should just look at guys starting kind of 20 something and back um they're they're like you know as much as we like the rfk boys and even penske like maybe getting one of them in just to be a little bit different but yeah. it's is it really worth the the gamble? Probably not. Now we enter probably my favorite range. Um, there's a ton of interesting options. Michael McDowell starting 39th at 7800 smash. Alex Bowman starting 31st, 7600 smash. smash. Yeah. Austin Dillon starting 21st, 7500 smash. <laughs> <laughs> uh, even Sindrick starting 16th at 7,300. I could smash that for sure. Dude, um, I love Austin Sindrick this week. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, I was listening to the uh, NASCAR betting preview show, and Dale Tanhart was on there, um, and he was waxing poetic about Sindrick and got me really excited. And yet, when we flip over and look at the betting odds, the uh, the number has moved the other way. Yeah, I don't bizarre. I don't understand that. But we'll we'll chat about that here in a bit. And then obviously Gibbs and Harvick. I think you want us to be in this range right here. Like the McDowell, Bowman, Dylan, all three of those guys are extremely compelling. The other thing you can do to be very different this week, don't be afraid to leave a lot of salary on the table. Yes. Le- yeah, just I was leave just a couple grand. Like- don't worry about it. That's how you can be unique rather than trying to force in somebody who's more expensive just because um you want to, you know build your lineup a little bit different. Yeah. I, and I think um, going back to the Hendrick drivers, when you have both Byron and Alex Bowman starting further back than say Chase Elliott and they're cheaper. If you want to get exposed to Hendrick and you, you know, that they're probably the best, the best garage in the sport. Like why pay up for the guy who's going to be really heavily owned when you can get somebody at probably similar, similar roster percentage for way cheaper in Alex Bowman, who's probably going to have a similar type of race, you know, trying to get up to the front early to stay up there for track position to get that win late. And, you know, he's going to get help from other Chevys. If he has guys that have victories and are locked into the playoffs behind him, if he's going up against a Ford, like um, I just, I don't feel the need to go up to the top here. I, I would almost be okay completely skipping anybody that's starting inside the top 10, you know, because you, you risk losing so many positions. If those guys are caught up in a wreck, especially if it's early, your, your, yeah. your lineup is dead. Yeah. Uh, 6k Almarola starting second. It was nice to know you, Eric Almarola, hey. but, <laughs> yeah. uh, you cannot be in our lineup. Eric Jones, 24, 67. Absolutely. Yeah. Chase Briscoe starting on pole uh love to see it not in my dk lineup ryan priest in the top 10 no thank you the dinger 17th me Corey okay. lajoy oh Corey lajoy at 37th f yeah he is definitely oh, yeah. 6200 and dinger's teammate justin haley starting 28 rounds out the 6k range welcome to the lineup justin haley Corey <laughs> lajoy uh, and Eric Jones, I think those are obviously the three in the in that group that stand out. Oh, yeah, no, for sure. Um, it, again, you're talking about guys that are starting in the back who are really good super speedway racers. Um, I, I'm not that surprised. I am kind of saddened by the fact that Ryan Priest put it inside the top 10 qualifying because I did like his pre pre qualifying numbers. Um, yep. I know I didn't really get down on him just because I wanted to be a little safer this week, but uh, <laughs> 
yeah, like he's always somebody I like at super speedways, but starting ninth, definitely not. And I was listening to the obviously the NASCAR betting preview show and they were talking. I think I want, I'm factoring Atlanta in a little bit more, not necessarily because it's similar, like it's the same as Daytona, but there is a lot of like similar packing the cars together, not giving you a lot of room to to get around. They're definitely not going three wide. So that that yeah. kind of stuff was interesting. The only thing I'll say about Atlanta from what I noticed, and this is just my eyes, I'm not talking about any metrics or anything because I don't even know about that data. Um, Atlanta seems to not, it doesn't seem to have the same type of runs that come at Daytona. Yeah. Where Atlanta, the you know, they just kind of stayed in line. Whereas Daytona, it's a lot easier to get runs because the track is bigger. So you can set stuff up a lot a lot slower whereas yeah. atlanta is so tight if you don't take advantage of a run you, you just wind up staying behind the car so you don't see them doing that as often that's a good point uh let's round out the rest of the field we have gillen starting 35th josh berry starting 29th harrison burton in the top five uh burton likes to go fast man austin oh, hill uh uh I want to say Cameron Smith, like the golfer, but it's Chandler Smith, obviously. <laughs> Riley Herbst, JJ Yaley, I have PGA on the brain. I was watching Morikawa crush oh, it. No. I'm very mad that I missed out. Ty Dillon, Brendan Poole, and your boy, BJ McLeod. Should be 100% roster this week. Absolutely. Every single lineup, put him in. Uh, uh, no one's going to be on him, and he's going to reward people. All like he's going to do is BJ's going to run his own race. He's just going to just gonna sit back and watch everybody his wreck and then wind up inside the top 15. Yep. Uh, all right, Brian. I think this week we'll build at least two lineups. We'll see where oh, we for get sure. to. Yeah. Um, all right. I am going to give you the 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 t this week where should we go who's the first name in well he was the first guy that i tweeted about early in the week on an outright and so i'm going to stick to that we're going to go alex bowman 7600 bowman the showman hopefully he's not bowman the slowman <laughs> uh, i'm going to go to mcdowell okay Hmm. All right, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna get gross. Just just put McLeod in there. It, it's oh baby, forty seven hundred dollars. Are you love kidding to me? See it. You love top tens to in see in it. each of the last two fall you races. So many lineups for tomorrow. It's ridiculous. Um. I think we're going to have plenty of salary savings, so I'm going to put Dennis Hamlin in. And I'm going to love every minute of it. Yeah, I really like that. I think right, he's going to go... be just a little less owned than, than Byron, a little less owned than Elliot, and have more upside. All right, I'm going to go to the other guy or another guy I have an outright on. We're going to do Austin Dillon. Okay. Um, okay, we can literally do anything. I think this would be a spot where if you really wanted to, get, well, you could get gross and add LaJoy, or I was going to say you could add one guy that's kind of near the front. You know, we could go with a higher price guy that you think yeah. is going to be there at the end, though. I think Stenhouse or LaJoy or probably Ross are like the three names that I'm kicking around in my head. I don't love well, Ross, I mean, but... Who has the best chance to win? It's not LaJoy. Yeah, I was just going to say, it's either Stenhouse or Chastain. I mean, I know Stenhouse won last time, but I feel like it's Ross Chastain. Do it. <laughs> and you kind of want a little queasy feeling in your stomach when you're building lineups. Otherwise, you're not doing it right. This is the greatest lineup ever. 
Okay. So Dennis Hamlin, Ross Chastain, Michael McDowell, Alex Bowman, Austin Dillon, and BJ McLeod. Um, it's certainly a lineup. I'm going to get us going with a second one. And since we fate didn't use him last time, he's the first man in this time. Richard Stenhouse, welcome to the uh, lineup, my guy. All right, and then this is going to be rather gross, but I think we go with the RFK team. Oh, God. Because I suspect that if if Busher runs a good race, which he's he's always done, he's going to be pushing Keselowski, and that to me is going to yeah, Tell I mean, they or, tend to run together yeah. almost anywhere they go. So I think that makes sense. I think if we're doing that, though, we really have to load up on back markers and, and fill our lineup that way. Oh, yeah. So I think we go LaJoy at 37. I think Gilliland is fine. I think McDowell at 39 is a play. What if What if we do LaJoy and Haley? Because we like the because we like the college guys, yeah, yeah, and then to avoid a uh, crossover, and again we have we have salary for anybody. Like even here, you could go in Elliot. Like if you think that, what about Brennan Pool? Mm, no, not ready to get that gross. I would. I would I rather mean, this go lineup. To- this is a lineup where we could put Elliot in and be fine. I think Elliot, or actually, actually, I'd rather go. I pref- much prefer Byron, but if you oh, want to push it. Elliot do in, it. I'm happy with that too. F yeah, yeah, that's so much better. Yeah, doesn't that feel better? Well, it always feels better because we're the full full fate. We're the average ass chase. Elliot, yeah, the- get a- out of the playoffs. A- we're the ace. All right, so, there, there's a three max three dollar that I'm going to enter. So we're going to build one more lineup before we go to the oh betting no. card. <laughs> All right, do we want this to be an average ass Elliot lineup, or do we want to go somewhere else? All right, how's this for a start, Bubba Wallace? That's that made me throw up in my mouth. <laughs> we can't go that full. No, I, I put my foot down. We, I, I'm not thinking Bubba. About- I'd love to add him to the betting card, but. So deep, Bubba has deep. never finished wor- or he only has one finish worse than I think it's like 21st or 22nd at Daytona. Yeah, he's he's always fourth. Yeah, but even he could he stay w- up front. Even if he wins, I don't know that that's good enough. Well, what if he what if what if we get a situation like we did at the 500 where like um uh, Denny is able to maneuver his way up front by the end of stage 1? And then push Bubba to the lead, and they, as teammates, do what Busher and Keselowski did early at the 500, which is basically lead the majority of the race. And nobody is going to be on that. Like, think about that. Who is going to want to put Bubba Wallace in their DFS lineup? Nobody starting in the front two rows. Nobody. Nobody. I mean, that's it's certainly something. I'm. I'm. You know what? Congratulations. <laughs> uh, that gives us the ability to do whatever we want. You know what we're gonna do? Oh man! And now we just gross it up. Now we now I mean BJ McLeod, Brendan Poole, um, Austin Hill is interesting enough. Gilland. Uh, LaJoy, Haley, who you want? Man, I don't want to get too exposed to those guys. I mean, but they're like, they're like kind of smash it. I mean, we, if we don't want to go with all the same guys, that's fine. Eric Jones is in play. I do like um, Eric Jones. Like I said, Brandon Poole, I think is fine. Uh, Haley, Sindrick's interesting enough. No one's going to be on Sindrick. But I don't know that we have to be off of Cindric. Um McLeod and Gilliland. I mean, if you wanted to get really funky, you could just throw away your money and put Riley Herbst starting sixth. No, no. <laughs> if, if there's not a three next to his name, I don't want it. <laughs> uh. 
All right. So Eric Jones, Corey LaJoy, Justin Haley, Todd Gilliland. Uh, Honestly, I like Eric Jones out of all those because t- he has the highest ceiling. Okay. Eric Jones. Welcome yeah, to the lineup. He has the highest ceiling for sure. Welcome to the lineup. Um, I'm going to put Brendan Poole in at 4,900. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, we're going to get, we're going to get disgusting. If we're going to go, if we're going to go with the Elliot Byron combo, we're putting the disgusting brothers in Brian, Brendan Poole, Eric Jones. Oh um, and now we can do pretty much anything. So we have Stenhouse. We have Chastain McDowell. I mean, McDowell seems like a smash Bowman. The show. What about what about Truex or Bell to have another? Toyota? I'm not putting Truex in. Uh Christopher Bell. Christopher Bell, you could talk me into. But uh Truex is not going in my lineup. <laughs> He's starting too far near the front. He has been better and obviously has been improved this year, but He's not a he's not a speedway guy. Christopher I Bell mean, now. So Christopher Bell started fifth and finished third at the five hundred. Christopher Bell is taking advantage of Chris Wormy not betting on him week, and he's definitely gonna win this week. So I That's what I was just gonna say. Like, think about it. Everyone's off of him finally. Yep. I mean, we have this lineup legitimately has five winners in it. Wallace, Elliott, Byron, Jones, and Bell all could, without like weirdness happening. Yeah, win the as race. you say that, Ryan Priest is going to win the fucking race. If okay. Ryan Priest wins the race, <laughs> I don't know. I was going to think of something creative. But my brain doesn't want to go there, so we'll just leave it like that. So these are our three lines. Yeah, I feel like that would be the best thing ever to happen. Do us, don't do because... it. The best thing ever to happen would be Chase Briscoe running wire to wire. That would be the best. That would be ridiculous. That would be the worst <laughs> thing ever to happen because it oh. would mean that the race was boring as hell. Unless you have 50 to one on him you're holding on to. Uh, it, That's well, okay. You, I'm going to but... you take you take uh, you take um, you take matchups now when you're holding that ticket. Um, okay, let's see. So, um, before I get started, um, all right. So as we sit right now, I have bell at 30. I have Briscoe at 45. I had some poll bets. Brad K did not do it. Busher did not do it. That's fine. I have Austin Dillon as the top Chevy. Um, I have Christopher Bell as top Toyota, and then I added Dinger and Haley to top five because I think both of them will be interesting. And colleagues showed some stuff last week that I didn't think they had in them, so that was nice to see. You have four: you have Bubba, Dylan, Cindric, and Bowman. You also have a Dinger top ten, a Cindric top five, and a BJ McLeod top ten for the vibes. Uh, you have overtime at. Yeah, as a ha- happening at minus one ten, which is really nice. Given and I right added a couple of units since since uh, the show last recorded before they practice no, and qualified. That's fine. Before the number moved, um, and then Cinder top forward. So let's go look at the numbers, and then we'll come back. Chase ten twelve. Good luck. Um, unless, unless you think NASCAR is, um gonna do a lot to make sure chase wins so he have their popular driver in the playoff yeah i don't see any reason to bet that number blaney 10 14 kaslowski logano like i don't i don't want to i guess stop me when i get to somebody that you actually want to put money down on because none of these guys are appealing byron bubba busher at 18 maybe um draft kings I start and- to get interested at the 16 to 1 spot with with bubba i think that's like the beginning of interest but i yeah. would i would not bet that now like i mean right. especially i got him 20 yeah. prior to qualifying um yep it's hard to get down on anybody that's not 20 to 1 or longer at a yep. super speedway i agree busher 
fine. Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson's actually not terrible at 18. I could get behind that. Almarola at 20. Uh, Chris Bell at 20, I think, is worthwhile. I bet him at, oh, I bet him at 30. Yeah, see, I that's think, what I mean. Like... I think 20 is fine. Uh, Austin Sindrick at 28. I'm adding that right now. Yeah, okay. So, complete opposite there. The Fords have been qualifying like machines this year at super speedways. Austin Sindrick opened at 25 at DK. Still 25 there. Caesars, I believe he was like 22. So how did he get longer? And yet Christopher Bell, who opened at 30, got shorter and he put it right near Austin Sindrick. And for my money, I would take Austin Sindrick over Christopher Bell at a super speedway every day. I'm guessing it's just the money that's coming in. They heard Wormy's not betting Bell this week. Everybody's lining up to bet Bell, and <laughs> Sindrick's number is floating uh, because of it. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Bowman's number, 18, 25. 25 on Bowman's fine. I could see Bowman the showman winning. Uh, I want no part in Suarez. I don't really want to have any part of Tyler Reddick. Um, I remember when I used to bet Ross Chastain all the time, and now I have no interest, which is wild. 28's a fine number. Hey, 28's a good number, man. Yeah, and those are those are up to date. We check Caesars and points bet and DraftKings before. Not bet 365, but it seems to be on par. So just to kind of use these as a baseline. Austin Dillon at 30, I think, is compelling. I wouldn't bet him at 20 or 22, but if you can get him at 30, yeah, I no. think it's fine. The Briscoe kid, 33, I'm good with, uh, 25, I, I don't, I don't understand. Briscoe was a weird one because he opened, he opened in like the thirties and then was, and then I know he went to 45 when we talked at DraftKings, he was as long as yep. 50 and now he's come back after putting it on pole. I think he's somebody that I don't really love getting on at this point. Like I would rather. I would rather bet. Would you rather bet Dylan or Briscoe? Probably Dylan, just because yeah. I think his history at Super Speedways says that he has a legit shot to win. Where Briscoe, like, it, he's just kind of all over the place at these types of races. Ross or Briscoe? <laughs> Uh, probably Chastain. Like the twenty-eight to one number is incredible. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, he's like I just in terms of winning upside, like it's hard to not go with somebody who I think can legitimately. Obviously, it's a silly season, crazy stuff happens. But I was just gonna say, like I, I I'm tempted to just put down a quarter unit on like four or five more guys in this yeah. range and then hope to hit, and you're still walking away with a pretty big net gain if one of them hits. I think Michael McDowell at 35 is an incredible number. I don't know if he had something wrong with his car, though, so I don't know what type of stuff yeah, he's going to going to the with. back anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, true. And it, uh, it'll be interesting to see tomorrow morning if we get anybody who fails tech or fails post-qualifying inspection or something because... That could play a huge role here. Yeah, so McDowell's been... Be so uh, one thing that is interesting is he's been better in the February race than he has been in the August race, which is, um, you know, obviously similar track, similar run, but different weather. Kind of interesting to think about. Eric Jones, 33, 35. I don't hate it. I guess let's do this. You want to throw a couple wild card. Like you have $30 burning a hole in your pocket. You're going to put 10 bucks on three names north of 30 to one. Give me those three names. And I can go first if that makes it easier. Uh, Man. And you can go, I mean, you can throw BJ McLeod in. Honestly, can, if I had 30 bucks, and let's say I was going to do like 10 bucks on all these. Yeah, put $10 on three different drivers. Who's winning? Well, I'm starting that with, with Dylan at 30 okay. to 1. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably even go like half of that 
on Dylan. I just think what's at stake and what we've seen in the past of him, I think he has the best shot. And then I'd probably go Stenhouse over Jones. And then I'd take whatever was left and I'd throw it on Dinger at 50 to 1 at DraftKings. I like it. Uh, LaJoy stands out for me. I know he's kind of an interesting option and didn't really thrive when he got in a good car, but um, 50 to 1 feels like a good number on him. Um, McDowell and Jones are interesting. I think I want to go. Yeah, I, I'd probably do McDowell and Jones at 35. Justin Haley was the name that I was kicking around, but I don't know. I feel like they'd rather bet Justin Haley like top five and just, but maybe he gets there. So, you know, 50 bucks on him or 20, 10 bucks on him and 50 to one is $500. Pretty nice. Yeah. And five. then, so uh, are there any outrights that you're going to, that you're interested in adding or you're going to add post qualifying? Uh, no. So I added, let's see, where's the spreadsheet? Here we go. Oh yeah, you added you added. Cindric. I added Cindric at twenty eight. I have Bell at thirty, and I have Briscoe at forty five. I think I'm okay. Um, if I were adding anybody, are you adding anybody? Bowman at twenty five. It's just been this race has been so funky with the winners because of like what's what's on the line and then what teammates are doing in order to get certain people positions. So like yeah, I, I love Ryan Blaney and I think he's due for a win at one of these super speedways, but I suspect like I worry if it comes down from a team decision, F1 style, like if Cindric is anywhere near him they're going to do everything possible to get him in front of Blaney to push him into the playoffs. Well, and the interesting thing too is like pushing somebody new into the playoffs. Like they Hendrick has two guys that they could try and do that with. And obviously if they're both there, that could be interesting. Um, Penske obviously can push. Push Cindric into there. Um, Toyota. Do they, do they, want to make sure Bubba gets that last spot. Um, obviously the 2311 plus Denny being out there, that could be interesting. Well, so that's an interesting dynamic there because Denny's on record twice now of saying like, he's going to push Bubba Wallace over his technical teammate, Ty Gibbs. If, when it comes down to it, because he, he owns the car that Bubba's driving. So he's putting his ownership stake ahead of his teammates. And you kind of wonder or at least I do. How's that going to go in the Gibbs? Uh, I think we're going to have some more silly season next year. I think we could have some driver shakeups. There's some young guys that are ready to come up. There's some veterans that are ready to move. Obviously, a couple guys are going away. It could be a season of silly, and Denny could be like, oh, okay, well, we'll have three 2311 cars next year, and I'll hop in, and then there won't be any issues about where my loyalty resides. Yeah. Like, and then I think from the Hendrick perspective, um, obviously if one of them wrecks out early, then they're going to be able to go full bore for the other one. But who are they going to decide to push in the race? For sure. Chase. Okay. So that to me brings up another dynamic that we haven't even talked about. What if it's Chase Elliott and Alex Bowman and you got both the other Hendrick cars having to push Chase Elliott just because team priorities. But Larson is going to spin. Larson is going to spin out Bowman, and Byron is going to push Chase <laughs> to victory. <laughs> now, hold on, but you got the rest of the Chevy camp just because I'm sure it probably gets annoying as as a fellow driver. Like, oh, everyone talks about Chase Elliott. It's all anybody gives a shit about. Screw him. Let's try to get Alex Bowman in. I mean, it's a nice thought, but NASCAR is probably like, if you're in position, you can push him into the playoffs. We'll give you a check for fifty thousand dollars <laughs> because Home Depot and yeah, Hooters and, and uh, I guess Cola and Hooters and all of his 
key yeah. sponsors uh, are going to be very excited to have that happen. So I'm not worried about the ratings dropping if Elliot's not in the playoffs. Who cares? Uh, I think NASCAR cares, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. All right. Uh, all right. So top tens anything interesting i mean i don't really love betting plus 100 on a lot of these guys at the top yeah, 10, no. even though it feels okay i think if you're betting top tens you're coming down here and getting getting wild oh like yeah you gotta try to get value then here uh austin hill top 10 even that's like two plus, plus 250 that's fucking wild does that is um, that real Top five, however, though, could be fun. I think there's room. McDowell plus 275, which is a better number given where he's starting. All um, right. I got an I got an addition. Alex Bowman, 320. Very bottom of the board. Is BJ McLeod getting a top five? No, he's getting a top ten. Oh. They gave me four more units. Let's go. What is this? Oh, top. Why does it say top five here? But then this is top five. That's so weird. Top five finish. Top five finish. And like it's broken or something. It's repeating itself. Uh oh. Oh. Uh, Austin Dillon 320 to top five. Harvick at four McLeod, to one. Twenty-five to one. Who? <laughs> BJ McLeod. <laughs> Season of silly. Uh I don't hate like an Eric Jones four to one or a Stenhouse four to one. Yeah. On a top five. That's that not terrible. Fun. Um top Chevy Ross at ten. Stenhouse at twelve. Haley at 20, I think is funny. Yeah. Haley or Dinger. Like, if you like Dinger to be somewhat competitive, and obviously they might need to win or get close to do that, but Dinger at 20 to 1 is a good way to bet him if you want some exposure because his, like, top five number is plus 550, and you can get 20 to 1 on it. Although, I guess, what's his actual top five number? Is that what it is still? Uh, top five, Corey LaJoy, yeah. Uh, where is AJ? A dinger top five? He's probably like two and a half to one or something. Uh, so oh, he's Haley five, plus one. 160, and I got him at... What, am I in the right one? No, it's top ten. That's why. <laughs> God, I'm, it's like I've never done this before. All right, so top five. Here we go. Um, top five finish. Yeah, he's five to one, I think. Dinger is five to one. Haley is five to one. Mm -hmm. And you can get them at 20 to one to be top a top Chevy. Chevy. So I'd much rather have four times the odds for a similar range of outcomes. I think if if you're looking at it from that perspective, I think the best value is top Toyota market because um, Denny Hamlin is plus 160 to top five. He's plus 240 to be the top Toyota. Yeah. Bubba Wallace is like plus 180 or plus 200 to top five. He's plus 320 to top Toyota. Like there's such a small camp. The likelihood of them having multiple guys inside the top five is low with mm -hmm. the vast majority of the field making up of other manufacturers. So I would much rather just go to the top Toyota market. For that. that is how you do it. Ladies and gents, like we talked about last week, we were all in on Byron, but his like top three, top five numbers stunk. So yeah. we bet him to top Chevy and all of a sudden it cashes. And it was like, Oh, that was fun. Uh, top four, Brad K Logano, Blaney, Busher, McDowell's eight to one Almarola. Briscoe at 10 to 1. Um, Cindric, 
Harvick. Like if I had Matt Sendrick already at ten to one, I would be all over that. Ryan Priest at sixteen to one. If you want some Priest exposure, I don't hate that. The only thing I worry about there is the Fords have a good four. They have four, four, le- plus four guys, or five, five legitimate. Yeah, they have four or five legitimate winners, and that's scary. Yeah, and I, so it for that reason, I would probably rather bet Priest to win. Yeah, it's probably a good call. Um, yeah, I'm not betting any matchups. I don't think this week anything. Let's go see if there's any like silly numbers. Because if there's a number like yeah, plus money, number. plus two eighty for a. a Close enough matchup. There is no way they're giving us that. I don't think so either, but you never know. Bush versus Larson, Logano versus Blaney. You want to add that for the feels? I yeah, I know because Harvick at plus money over Almarola, Burton at plus money over McDowell, William Byron plus a hundred over Denny Hamlin. Again, like Tyler Reddick, yeah, it's just the like it's not good enough. I probably honestly, need to... in my opinion. So, uh, if if people on here aren't aware, I I was a guest on uh, the back road with Seth last night over at IBT Media, and uh, there were two matchups that I mentioned on there that I was interested in, but I wasn't going to bet them. Ryan Priest over Todd over Todd Gilliland, just from Priest's background at super speedways and it was minus 110 yesterday and then the other one was Bubba Wallace over Tyler Reddick for the reasoning of that Reddick's job tomorrow is to push Bubba Wallace to points and to stay behind him to push him further up into the field in no point in that race should Tyler Reddick be ahead of Bubba and then unless the, Bubba crashes I was just going to say in the only way Reddick winds up finishing better than Bubba is if Wallace wrecks before, you know, we get to like a couple laps to go here. If you want to check out that show where Brian and uh, Seth talk DFS tiers and some of their bets, obviously it was pre um, practice and qualifying. I'll drop it in the comments uh, of the show, the show notes. You guys can go check that out as you prep for a big, long day of waiting for the NASCAR race. There's just nothing head to head, Matt. Why is that? I really want to get in on. Is there anything you want to screaming out your name, or should we just give the people some thoughts um, and get out of here? Look, I obviously I bet Blaney over Logano every single week. I can, but not at a super speedway. And then, uh, yeah, even the plus money matchups this week are not enticing enough. Yeah. And like Haley and Dinger plus 160 to top 10. I mean, Corey LaJoy to top 10. Like I want to I want to give the people a bet that I feel good about. These numbers, man, they're just gross. I know they're This is going to be a tough week to It's Wormy smart. He bet. understands this is not a week to get invested in. It's a fun week to throw a few shekels down, see what you can find, see what you can stick to uh, winner circle. And then obviously if you lose 20 bucks or 50 bucks or whatever unit is, that's fine. But, you know, don't don't blow your whole bankroll on a, a race of nonsense. Yeah. Let's see. What is... I, you know, I'm I'm kind of sad we don't have uh, Chase Elliott matchups. I'm kind of sad we don't have Chase Elliott to not top ten, but it's probably shit. Yeah. Number. All right, yeah, there's not a lot. What's this top three number? 
This is fantastic radio. Okay. Um, all right. So top three, Austin Sindrick is seven to one. Or top five, Austin Sindrick is plus 320. Is it worth it to get half less than half of that number for two more spots? See, no. here's what's gonna happen. If I bet him top five, he's gonna get he's gonna get third, and I'm gonna be like, why didn't I bet that? And if I bet him top three, he's gonna get fourth. So that's what I, I so normally I like to see the odds uh more than double to move up just two spots. So I think it's a better spot to hit the top three. But if that's if that's the route you want to go, just bet him top four because he's twelve to one now. That's what I'm doing, Brian Twining. That is what I'm doing. It is in officially the season of Silly. He is 12 to 1. And guess what, Brian? Let's recap the card and I'll give everyone my best bet. Christopher Bell, 30 to 1. I'd still take him at 20. Nothing is shorter. Austin Dillon, top Chevy. Uh, Christopher Bell, top Toyota. Still, but you can get a decent number there. Chase Briscoe at 45. I think you can get anything north of... Th- nah, he's probably unbettable. If it's if there's a three there and you want to get on, I think it's fine. I think if it's a two, there's better options. Dinger, top five. Haley, top five. Uh, Cindric, I added today at 28. And my favorite bet as we sit here right now, because the top three and top five numbers stunk so much. Austin Sindrick as your top forward at 12 to one. Brian, go ahead and recap the card and give your people, give the people your favorite bet. I feel like you just jinxed. Don't tell me you're going to put Austin Sindrick as your, oh my God. Now I need to no, take but card. You, Do you not see all the Sindrick on here? All right. <sighs> So <laughs> I, I'm only going with four outrights, uh, Bubba, Austin Dillon, Austin Sindrick, and Alex Bowman. Um, I got two top tens, um, AJ Allmendinger and BJ McLeod, who I went back to the market and got 12 to one. Um, I have Austin Sindrick also at a top five at plus 425, which I got that pre, pre-practice and qualifying. I had bet him top four at 10 to one. I'm adding that 12 to one number because it's trick is out in stage one book it. <laughs> and then uh, my favorite bet, like so far of the week that I found is definitely the prop overtime. Yes. Which um, I had it for one, one unit on Wednesday show last night when I did the recording with Seth, like I talked myself even more to <laughs> going heavier. So I added it this morning before practice and qualifying and then I just added, I feel extremely strong about this. I cannot go to a super speedway without getting a little more action on my guy, Bubba Wallace. Bubba Wallace top Toyota at 320 for one unit. And that's going to be my favorite bet going into the race. Ryan, we, we talked to ourselves. We said we weren't going to get overexposed. And our betting card is an absolute disaster. I cannot Look. wait to see all of these guys crash. It's going to be a bad bloodbath of a day but i cannot wait i'm very excited i'm gonna have the race on i'm gonna be doing a fantasy draft um i'm gonna be celebrating when chase briscoe crosses the line gets us into the playoffs gets us over 0.5 wins on the season and wins the coke zero sugar 400 that is brian twining i am kyle robert let us know who's winning the race down in the comments uh, as I mentioned, I put, I'll put Seth and Brian's episode in the comment link to that as well. Enjoy your race, and uh, we'll talk to you next time.